Hey everybody. Uh, today I, I really wanted to talk about a super important topic that uh, really kicked my ass when I first started with my 3D printing farm and, and creating a product um, that was an accessory to another product that was an in, that was injection molded. And uh, one of the, in my opinion, one of the most important things about creating products to sell on a 3D printer is having dimensional accuracy, especially if it's a part that is going to be an accessory to something else that's injection molded. For example, I make um, cases for these cards and these acrylic slabs as they're called or holders. These are injection molded so they're always going to be, um, as long as they use the same molds, they're always going to be exactly the same size and it's going to be pretty damn accurate because it's created from a mold. And so if I were to create a case, well then my cases have to be exactly um, the right fit or else it, it's not going to work, it's not going to do all the, the things that I want it to do. So I want to I want to talk about how to get um, really accurate prints on your 3D printer and also I want to talk about why I don't use these. Stay away from these, do not calibrate with a 20 millimeter calibration cube and I'm going to tell you exactly why. So I went ahead and I printed 10 because I wanted to, I wanted the data to be um, uh, I guess conclusive and I wanted to show you and make my point that the repeatability of the Ender 3 uh, it's, it's around point, uh, I'd say in my experience 0 0.06 millimeters so you could, when you print something, I don't care how many times you calibrate it, it may be plus or minus, uh, you know, uh, 0 0.02 or 0 0.03 because the tolerances on our filament also are not perfectly 1.75. The, the tolerances are plus or minus 0 0.03. And that, I use Hatchbox and that's what they have. So because of that, our prints are never going to be, you know, CNC quality. They're not going to be exactly to the thousandth of an inch <clears throat> with that being said if you were to calibrate with a 20 millimeter calibration cube uh, let me show you the results I printed these 10 on the same 3d printer exact same settings with the same spool of filament and these are the results when I, I use my calipers my calipers are accurate and I measured this in the exact same way that I measured every single one. And you can hear the results, right? I got 10. And this has been, um, this printer has been calibrated to 100 millimeters. All right, so when I printed this, look at the results. They're not, they're not, well, most importantly, they're not consistent, right? This is the range, 0 0.03 to 0.09 millimeters. That's, that's the range of a print that all, all it was was just printed over and over and over 10 times. At 20 millimeters, that's a 0.3% that's a uh, range. So if you calibrate to 20 millimeters, uh, you don't know if... if if um, you've just calibrated a print on the low end on a 0.03 or on the high end so so the next time so if you print to 20 millimeters and then you do a let's say 200 mil or not 200 but uh, let's say a 100 millimeter print well you if you're lucky I mean if you're lucky you may be off by 0.3 millimeters and that might not be likely it might actually be higher but 0.3 millimeters is and in, in my, what for my product was is completely unacceptable and I'll, I'll tell you why so this one right here this case was calibrated using just the 20 millimeter calibration cube and I and I did this uh, as an example this one was calibrated using a 100 millimeter 
calibration print, this one, that I have developed. And I'll show that to you in just a second. But this, you can see here, fits perfect. Doesn't come out. I mean, I can shake this thing out. It won't, or I can shake it, it won't come out, right? Of course, I use a little thing in the back. Comes out just fine. This one, however. Oh, I mean, I just barely shaked it. No way in hell I'm going to sell these with uh, the potential of a customer damaging their slab. Actually, I think I cracked it a little bit right there. But whatever, this is a test. So, you know, when I made these... Damn, now I'm really messing it up. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so 0.3 millimeters might not seem like a lot. But it really is because... Uh, that, and that's on the low end. So you might, you might actually be off one whole millimeter who knows I, I don't know what the calibration curve is for for the ender 3 but i just know that when i first started making my products i calibrated every single one of my printers to this 20 millimeter cube and when i was creating my initial prototypes i was wondering why in the world were they not consistent some were so tight i couldn't get the slab in some were so loose, they would literally just fall out. I wouldn't even have to shake it. I mean, it was all over the place. Until I said, you know what? I need to calibrate using a 100 millimeter test print. So I've developed this one. And I've showed this in my video before, but I want to show you why I love using this thing. So... I mentioned in the video before, I do routine checks on my print printers to make sure that they're all printing, you know, within range and tolerances for these cases that I make. And this print right here, this particular printer that I printed these tin from was printer number 14. So it was, they're all within... 0.04 millimeters okay this one was 0 0.06 and this one was 0 0.06 so that's the range but I've calib I have now calibrated at 100 millimeters so what's the percentage of of uh, 0 0.06 to 100 millimeters I don't know was it 0 0.006 percent or something so that's way more accurate than the 0.3%. So please do yourself a favor. If you really want to calibrate your printer, use a much larger test print. Actually, if you're selling a product that is 130 millimeters, calibrate to that. If you're just going to mass produce those, calibrate to, the, to, to exactly the dimensions that your part is going to be. I would I would do a 200 millimeter print if my calipers were big enough, but for me 100 millimeters is fine. Also, one of the reasons why I really don't like the calibration cube is I'm gonna try to get a close up here. I got a little bit of ele elephant's foot here, right? Okay, so and I know you guys are smart enough to not just go in there and just go right on the elephant's foot and get some bogus dimension I know you guys are smarter than that but there's still some slight issues right this layer line right here for example boom really uh, like let me just show you guys here let me zero this out mm. Point zero eight, okay, on the X. Point zero eight. If I go down just a little bit, 
Well, let me see here. This one's actually not bad. But I did have a calibration cube that there was a little bit of layer shifting. Look, this is a 0 0.05, exact same area that I measured. Let me go down a little bit. 0 0.03. I mean, it's just so easy to get a bogus reading. Right? And and forget about doing it on the side because of the uh, over extrusions on the corners. Look at that. It's bowed. All right? I mean, when you do this, you can see you can see the light through there. And look at that reading. 20.18. So just stop using these in my in my opinion. That's my advice. I've stopped and my prints have been very accurate and I've had no unhappy customers that hey my cases keep falling out or hey this is too tight and I, I damaged my my card or whatever so just just don't even look at these <laughs> and I'm sorry for being you know I don't know how to call it but like it's just I, I don't I don't recommend these at all so for this print I've I've added um, for the exact same reasons that you see these over extrusions on the corner I've created these fillets so now you know when whenever you go to check this print right here whenever you go to check this print Zero 0.04 and that's within the I would say the uh, repeatability of the Ender 3 you don't, you're not it's not skewed by having these over extruded corners so I, I, I just wanted to make this video and and let you know that if you if you have products that you want to sell that are uh, that it's critical to have extremely accurate uh, measurements then just just don't, don't don't even look at these calibrate i mean even even f this for example you know just take the inside i sell many different sizes so i didn't do it that way but if you're just selling one single product just just calibrate to that and it'll make your whole world a lot better anyways i just you know thought i'd talk about this just throw it together and I, I hope this information is valuable. Like I said, I, I don't really script these videos and and I just um, kind of just speak off, off you know the top of my head. So uh, if you made it this far, I really appreciate it, uh, appreciate you watching and listening. I just want to help you to you know have really good prints and be able to sell some cool stuff. And also a big thank you to everybody that has subscribed to my channel. You know, I have 62 subscribers at this point. So that's really, really cool. Um, I really appreciate it. I mean, I don't even, you know, I don't even have 60 friends. I mean, I have 60 friends. I mean, but, or I know more than 60 people, I should say. But still, the fact that, you know, you guys are listening to me, I really appreciate it. Anyways, I won't go on any further. Uh, thank you for watching and take care.